Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, and He alone is capable of guiding us into all truth. And this has been my morning prayer, my evening prayer. This has been my constant prayer, in fact, that the Holy Spirit will come to open the eyes of those who have been chosen but haven't yet realized that. So, we want you who have been chosen, we want you to have the understanding, the discernment, to understand, to know that you are chosen by God. But Bishop, how do I know whether or not I was chosen? It's a good question, isn't it? How do I know if I've been chosen? How do I know it? How am I going to have this certainty that God chose me? I live in sin. I am someone who is dirty. Did God really choose me? Pay attention. Pay very close attention. God chooses those who fear Him. Everyone who fears God, whether evangelicals, Catholics, Spiritists, or whatever, these people will have the opportunity to know Him. So, if you heard the Word of God, believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your only Lord and God, and you were baptized in water, then for sure you believed, for sure you were chosen. Now, Bishop, I, I can't control my flesh. Well, you can't control your flesh, but you can control your thoughts, yes or no. In your thoughts, you give direction to your heart, which is your soul. So, this conflict that you've been facing every day, every moment, that we all actually face this conflict, it's a war inside of us between the flesh, which is the heart, and the spirit, which is the mind. So, when a person fears God, then they make the effort they fight, they sacrifice, then sometimes they stumble and fall, they trip over, but then they run to the altar and they say, my God, have mercy on me. Jesus told us to say the Lord's Prayer, and in the Lord's Prayer, He tells us to ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. So, this prayer is for you to be cleansed, pure before God daily, because the Lord's prayer needs to be done daily, constantly. Whoever fears God, obviously, follows the guidance of the Lord Jesus, and they pray. They pray at home, they pray at work, in the train, they are constantly connected to God's thoughts, wherever they are. So, these are the people who fear the Lord, and that was certainly chosen. However, what you need to understand, and that's the point of today's live, is that you have to take care, to be careful, not to be keeping an eye on somebody else's life. Because inside of the churches, there are many messengers of evil, of the devil, to be clearer, who are those that are not chosen, those who have been already rejected. 
Be careful, because they are inside of the churches to give a bad testimony, a horrible testimony concerning faith in Jesus with the goal of contaminating those who are chosen. <laughs> For sure, many people are saying like this, Oh, Bishop, that's exactly what happened to me. I, I was looking at someone who was faithful in church, at least in my eyes, they were always there, assistant, pastor, bishop, whoever, a pastor's wife. And all of a sudden, that person did something horrific. And that disappointed me so badly, that made me so frustrated that I ended up abandoning my faith. Well, so don't forget that anymore. The devil is cunning and he's always walking around looking to destroy those who have been elected, the elect ones, those who are chosen. He wants to make them fall. And if you are there paying attention to somebody else's mistakes, perhaps you are paying attention to someone who, who was not chosen, who is already condemned. And you are wasting your time. You are contaminating yourself with that person who is already condemned. Do you understand it, my friend? So that's why there are so many unchurched people out there. Why? Because they heard a bad report from Bishop Macedo that Bishop is this and that and the other. But who said these things? <laughs> who said these things? Who are the ones spreading these rumors? Then you are going to see that that person doesn't have any credibility. They have no good fruit in, in their work, in their life. So how will you give ears to someone who hasn't been chosen? My friend, I say this from my own experience. In the beginning of my faith, I would see and hear many bad testimonies of people who, in my eyes, were holy, but I found out that there was nothing of God in them. So what did I do? Did I leave the church? No, not at all. I wasn't in the church because of those people, the pastor, the bishop, or whoever. I was in the church to seek to feed myself of the Word of God. And the food given there was good, really good. However, they were condemned. And what could I have done? I'm, I was not going to pay attention to people like this. I will give attention to the Word of God. And by the way, I repeat here, that if you see, if you hear myself saying anything that contradicts the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures, if you hear me saying, if any word comes out of my mouth that doesn't combine with the Word of God, that doesn't agree with the Word of God, that matches the Word of God, then don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. You have to listen to the Word of God. That's what God said through the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, you. And through the other prophets as well, telling Israel to Jerusalem, speaking through all his prophets, drawing the attention of those people who are chosen, but they would, would make themselves as rejected or discarded due to their wrong actions and sins. So Jesus, when he came into this world, he saw that with his own naked eyes. He saw there the Pharisees, the hypocrites, and so on. So the hypocrites and Pharisees are those who are not chosen. And the ones who are not chosen, we cannot listen to them. We turn our back and we keep in the faith in what God said. What God said. Let's have a look here at the text. He said, God said like this to Israel, Jerusalem. He said to Jeremiah, oh, Jeremiah, go there in Jerusalem and tell my people like this, 
cry in the hearing of Jerusalem. Who is Jerusalem? Jerusalem represented the people of God, the people of Israel, the people who were chosen, who knew the word, the people who received the law, who had a pure and genuine faith. So go there and tell these people that thus says the Lord. And then he says, I remember you the kindness of your youth. Look how God is sensitive. Look how God has feelings, pure feelings towards human beings. Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you. I remember you when you went after me in the wilderness. How nice, isn't it? This is tremendous. When you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown, a, a dry land, a difficult land. Very well, you were faithful, loyal, you'd go after me, you'd follow me like a, a bride follows the groom. However, these people turn their back on me. And this is what has been happening to many believers who are actually unbelieving. Many people are going through this in the churches. People who certainly have not been chosen, but they continue there warming up the seat in the church. Why? Because the devil wants to use them to deviate the chosen ones. This is so strong, so strong, but so strong that I will tell you something. The Apostle Paul, he said like this. Pay attention to what he said concerning this situation. He said that he endured, endured for the elect all things. He endured all things. Yes. Paul would suffer for the elect to feed them, to alert them, to warn them, be careful, don't listen, do not listen to the unchurched ones, don't listen to the unbelievers, do not listen to those who are not called and chosen, who are not elect, don't listen to them. Paul said, I endure, therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect. Let me get the text here. Here it is. He says like this, Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory which means they were already chosen, but they still have to be saved. They still have to remain in the faith until the end. These are the chosen ones. These are the elect ones by God. May you be a chosen one. May you be an, be an God's elect one, because only like these, God will be sanctified in your life. God is not sanctified in the lives of those who are despised, those who are discarded, those who didn't fear Him, those who are not sincere in their faith, those who are not pure, those who didn't have character, the character of the Lord Jesus in their life. These are discarded because... This is very nice. Do you know why I'm laughing? Because I can remember now that, you know, that the father, before, in the days of old, the father would choose the bride for his sons. Do you remember that Abraham sent his servant to seek a bride for his son Isaac? Very well. Back then, that's how it was. The parents, or the father specifically, would choose the bride for his son. And that's what the Eternal Father, the God Father, does with regards to His Son, Jesus. The bride is the church. It is the church. So, 
in order for the person to be chosen, to be elect, they have to be virgin, virgin, pure, pure, spiritually speaking, of course. Because then they have to be washed, purified in the blood of the Lord Jesus. So when they are washed, purified, baptized in the Holy Spirit, then this person who was chosen by God, was elect by God, is then inserted in the church of the Lord Jesus, which is not an institution. It is a spiritual church whose head is the Lord Jesus himself and the body the members of this body, the cells of this body, are those who are washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, my friend, if you have been chosen, you can be certain that it was so that you would be able to meet with the groom who will soon be coming back, very soon, he's at the door. The news all over the world is screaming, shouting, the trumpets are being blown. Oh, listen, he's coming back. God allows all this disgrace that is happening all over the world in order for us to have ears to hear his voice, his word. But who has ears to hear his voice? The chosen ones. But who are the chosen ones, Bishop? I don't know. I just know one thing, that when a person is chosen, or when they make themselves chosen, they face hell, but they remain firm on the rock, which is Jesus. And come what may, the rain, the storm, the rivers may come against them strongly, the wind, but nothing shakes that house because it was built upon the rock, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is faith. And if you want to know more about this marriage, this wonderful marriage, where the Father himself chooses the bride for his son Jesus, then tonight in the love therapy, Christiane and Renato are going to be here in the Temple of Solomon and the other pastors and bishops will be in their respective churches as well, okay? May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow.